Okay, well, this looks like a beautiful near mint condition 70s British racing bike with a mixture of Nova record, super record parts, and well, the wheels are not part of the Camping Yellow fine family of products, but uh, they're what's on this bike. Okay, so you see the Royal Crest of the Dick Johnson Frameworks. Okay, well, it looks like a 70s bike, but it's not. I built this frame a few years ago, and the reason why I built it was because of somebody replying to one of my posts on one of my blogs, the over opinionated frame builder, where I had ridden my first Eroica a number of years ago, and I noticed a lot of people on the side of the road, either really tired or with broken bicycles. And so I was, I don't know, bold enough to give people advice on this blog. Like, who the heck is even reading my blog? Um, you know, I mean, it's, it's not like it had like thousands of followers. Maybe it's got like 60 or something like that. So uh, I wrote about the Eroica, not saying it was a bad thing, but saying I really enjoyed it. But if you're going to do the Eroica, besides having a bike like this, you know, period correct or whatever, you also need to be in decent shape. It's a hard ride. And also you need to have your bike in mechanically good shape. You can't just dust it off and polish it up and make it look good. Everything has to function because it's hard on a bicycle. There's dirt roads, there's really steep gradients, there's bumpy downhills. And this person who wrote into my blog took exception to that. They said that I did not understand the event, that walking up the hills is an essential part of the event. And having, of course, the period correct, beautiful bike in whatever shape that it's in is part of the event. The like breakdowns and walking a bike on a bike ride is, you know, I'm not getting it for some reason or other. Well, I got really angry as I would, you know, I tend to overreact to things like that. And so I decided to come back to the Eroica. He encouraged me not to come back because I obviously didn't understand the event, even though I rode it and had a great time and even got to ride with uh, Andy Hampston for about 15 minutes or so. That was really great. He's a really great person, super good bike rider and super good person and very chatty. It was great. So I came back to my, I waited a couple of years and I came back but I came back with a fleet of bikes like this that I had constructed with fictitious names on them of builders that don't exist to literally make fun of bike collectors. Well, um, is that an evil thing to do? Am I bad? Well, I am a bike collector, so I'm making fun of people like myself. Although the people I'm making fun of are maybe not that much like me. They're zealots like this guy who wrote into my blog saying that, well, because I didn't do the 120 mile heroic route and didn't walk up the hills like him and take 12 or 14 hours or whatever he did uh, and suffer like him on his period correct 1962 Legnano, um, that I didn't understand the event and I shouldn't come back. So I came back and I came back with all sorts of bikes like this. A Dick Johnson, Seymour Butts, a Cyrus Mego, there's a bunch of them up here. And of course, the purple one up there is the Stoolsworth. Uh, so yeah, none of these builders really exist, but the bikes exist. And um, like this one here, I constructed it out of, I believe it's uh, Reynolds 531 tubing, as it should be. And I did the uh, <clears throat> cheesy seat stay plugs and period correct kind of sketchy uh, uh, lug lining and uh, you know very British head tube and seat tube panelization royal blue doesn't look quite as rich on the camera as it does in real life and of course I put on some somewhat period correct parts although this SR LaProd seat post is not period correct but from a distance and then I have of course the nice beautifully worn in Brooks B-17 saddle and uh, an old 3T bar and stem, which I got off another bike. And so the whole thing was to 
kind of lampoon, not necessarily the Eroica. We all really like the Eroica. I mean, I brought like about a dozen people. Um, it's a beautiful route and, um, I don't know, a pretty well put on event, you know, for what they have. Obviously, their budget's not super good. I don't think they're making much money on it. Uh, and so we came back with uh, all wearing matching pink kits. It said Cycles Heroic. That was the team that I constructed to ride on these fictitious name bikes. So, um, yeah, so we all came back. And uh, I looked for the guy on his 1962 period correct Lignano, but I never found him. I know, he might be a perfectly nice guy. Uh, and maybe I'm overreacting to what he said, but uh, I obviously heard his feelings by saying that, oh, you need to have your bike in good shape and you need to be in good shape in order to not, you know, be miserable on this ride. And of course, if you really want to have a good time <clears throat> on this ride, you need to be riding on a Dick Johnson. So, um, yeah, so Dick Johnson is like a lampoon of Bob Jackson. Bob Jackson was a bicycle company in Great Britain in the uh, 60s and 70s. It imported, actually exported a lot of frames to the United States. And most of them were built in a hurry and were pretty awful. I worked at a place that sold them in the 70s and boy, the alignment and uh, there was all sorts of other problems with them. Not all of them, some of them are great, you know? I mean, some people have been riding them for 40 years and they're fine, 50 years, whatever. But I worked on some that were just abysmal. They were really, really bad. So I decided to make fun of that brand because of, well, it's easy to make fun of things that are maybe kind of crappy that have the reputation of being really good amongst bike collect collectors, but amongst bike mechanics, it's a different story. So being somebody who was a shop mechanic for about nine years, I experienced Bob Jackson's up and close, being a frame builder for, I don't know, 40 years plus, I have had to work on these and you know, replace tubes and stuff like that, do repair work on them, and was astonished at how poorly they were built. So, but I assure you that the Dick Johnson is of the finest, finest quality. Okay, well, there you go. I could tell you a fictitious story about Dick Johnson, but you'll have to read that on cyclesheroic.blogspot.com where you will find the story of all these fictitious bikes. This is the real story behind it. Okay, that's what happens when you get angry and you're a frame builder. Um, you seek revenge on somebody you'll never see again, who you never met, who was probably a decent person, uh, by building a fleet of bikes that have no reason to exist other than fulfilling, <laughs> fulfilling whatever stupid vision that I had. There you go.